Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to create a multi-page invoice. Let's say for example we're creating a simple invoice where we want to invoice a client. We have our company name, street address, phone number, and a bill to with the information. We can also put an invoice here if we want it, you know, invoice invoice number. I can just add that in here. And we can just put hash marks here. All right. And then I'll just bold that. Let's say we have an invoice number here, and then we have a table that has the date of the items, uh, description, and the amount. And let's say at the bottom we want to show that we have a subtotal for those amounts, maybe there's tax involved, and then the total adds the subtotal and tax. So the subtotal basically, this is a table here, it's using the table feature of Excel, and what the subtotal does is it subtotals the above amounts. And this tax here, it is basically just a subtotal times some local tax percent. This one's 8%, 0.08. And the total is just the sum of the subtotal and tax, or miscellaneous fee. We have this thank you for your business. And if we want to look at this in a page preview mode, how it would look if it was printed, we can just go ahead and go to File, Print. And there's, there's going to be a little preview here and this is how it would look. Let me go and press escape to get out of this. So let's say for example that we wanted to have multiple pages and not have to do too much work in adjusting the table or formatting. So since this is a table, since this is a Microsoft using the table feature, you see these drop downs and we open it and you see that. This won't print out, the, the drop downs won't print out, but the table gives us some options not to do too much stuff. Like if we wanted to add a certain row here, it'll push it down and also push uh, that part down and it won't affect the subtotal tax or total lines. So in order to add another row, we can just go, and if we want to add a row in the middle, we can right click it and go insert and it's going to insert a blank here, but I don't want to do that. Say for example, usually when we create a table, let me go ahead and delete this. Usually we have our oops, usually we have our items here, and then we want to get to the last row where there's data and we want to add to it. So let's for say for example, I'm here at the last cell, I just have to press the tab key and it's gonna insert another row. And you can see this little little thing down here, that's the end of the table. Let me go ahead and add a couple other items. Pretend I'm adding a couple other items. Just click here, tab, click here, tab, click tab, click tab click tab and click tab. You can see this line here. This line indicates that it has gone through to another page. So if I bring up the page preview mode, let me go ahead and just copy these down here. Select that and select that little fill handle and bring it down. And now we see that when we did that, it's kind of brought down the date sequentially and also the item numbers. And let's just make this all $1. Control C to copy select those cells, control V to paste. Now if I bring up page preview mode, I can go on to file print or I can just press control P to print and it'll bring up the print options and I can see that I have this first page and let's say page one of two and it also has the bottom here make all checks payable to and if I select the next page you'll see that this part has also copied over. Basically it's printed over and you have the next line of items and then you have your subtotals there. So I'll show you how to do that. Let me go ahead and press escape and let's go into how we're going to do that. Let me go ahead and just copy. I'm just going to copy these because these are basically just text cells. I'm going to copy up to row 13. Select that control C to copy and then control V to paste. So now you can see that it's kind of added, it's kind of put everything too close together because these are equidistant column links. You can see here that these are not. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that later. I'm also going to copy the headers here or maybe I just copy the first couple rows. Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. I'm, notice I'm copying it in column B because I left this kind of I left this column kind of empty. So let me go ahead and Control V to paste. Now we can see that it's copied over the formatting, but it didn't copy over the table feature. See, 
And the reason why we can we know this is a table feature is if we click here, you'll see the context menu show up, table tools design. And if we click over here, and you see that it doesn't show up, right? So in order to turn this into a table, we can go and just select that and go insert table. And it's going to pick it out that understand that my table has headers. And we'll make sure that that's checked. And the where the data is of the table, it's just going to be B14 to D16. B14 starts here. D16, it ends there. We'll just use that for now. Click OK. So now we'll just kind of start to increase the column links. Let me go and double click that to auto fit. This one you want to make, I want to make this a little bit longer. All right, that looks good. And maybe double click this to auto fit the content. So this is the biggest text content in there. So it's, it's going to auto fit that. That's OK. So now we have our header here information. And let's say that we, let's increase this table a little bit. So let's bring that, I can select that. As long as I select that down there, it's going to bring it down. So I just have to select this and I'll bring it down maybe up to 40, maybe up to 50. Let's see how far that goes. Okay. So we have it up to 50 and I can start it off since I started this, to started with January 1st and January 2nd. If I double click this, it's going to sequentially I'll double click this fill handle. Actually, I can just select these two, these two cells. If I double click that fill handle there, you see a little square there, it's going to copy it all the way down and increment it. So you see how it's incremented at 1, 2, 3, January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. Now this date here is a view of the formatting. So I can have it go like this, look like that, or I can just choose the shorthand date or long date. This is a custom date. If you want to go and check that out, there's another video I have that shows custom number formatting. But I'm just going to keep it with this for now. You can choose whatever you like, short date, long date, or choose your own, make your own. And now I want to create that subtotal, tax, and total line. So that's basically pretty easy. I'm just going to go ahead and copy, copy the text over just to make it easier. Go ahead and select that, Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. Whoops, so why did it do that? So basically I thought that that was adding another another part of the table in there and I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and bring it up. All right, so now it's not part of the table. And now it's, you see that it's kind of kept those lines there. Let's get rid of those lines. I'm going to select that and get rid of formatting. So I just want to clear the formatting, clear all formats. So that's gone. But I do want to bring this and make it right justify. So I'll click that and have it right justify the alignment click that and for subtotal I want to have the subtotal everything above so I can just click on the auto sum here and click on sum so what's going to do it's going to put a subtotal formula in there and it's going to figure out that and this is table 2 and the amount column so it's going to subtotal all these here so I want to create another cell here that is the tax. So I'm going to go ahead and type equal that cell D51 times 0.08, 8%. And then that 8% equals $2.88. And this total, basically I can just auto sum again. And since it's highlighted here, I can just select these two. And it's going to select D51 to D52. Press enter. And then it's got that. And let's see what else I have. I don't want to do too much typing. I'm going to keep this text, control C to copy, and I'm going to bring it over. Let's see, it's going to be the second row here, or the row below it there, two rows below it. And let's see how it looks in the page preview. Let me go ahead and press control P, and you can see that it has taken away some of that. It didn't pick it up. So what we can do, escape, is you can see now that that it did not pick that up. So what we can do is we can look at the page layout and look at the margins. Let's say, what kind of margins do we have? Let's just pick this narrow margin. Or we can do custom margins. Pick this narrow margin and see if it picked it up. So once I did that and press Control P, you can see now that it picked it up. The other option is just to decrease the column width there. If I press Escape and I select this and just decrease the column width a little bit and press Control P again, you can see that it's done that. But I kind of like the earlier, so I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. 
And let's see. And let's see. It's let me move this out a little bit. It's up to the edge now. Let me move it a little bit back. All right. So let's do Control P, and that looks about right. So you notice that now I've got two pages because I've entered in too many rows. So if I click this next page, you'll see that it has not picked up that the from and to. So let's change that. Let's see how we can make that happen. So what's really happening, the way that it picks up these rows to bring it over is it's basically repeating these rows. So what we want to do is we want to have some rows keep repeating for each page. So under the page layout tab, under page setup group, go ahead and click this arrow here and it will give you the page setup window. And what we want to do is we want to go to sheet and we want to repeat some columns. So we click on this cell here and what we want to do is we want to repeat these first 12 columns. Maybe maybe we'll add an extra column here for some space. And once we do that, we, we can there's a print preview here. And if I press the forward next page button here, you can see now it is added that. And so one thing that we've noticed here that now it just kind of had that total there. So what we might, might want to do is cancel out of this, press escape, and when you have those kind of situations, maybe you just want to add a couple extra lines. Press tab, tab, tab. And then if we go into print preview, control P, you can see that now it's printed at that. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. You know, you might want to just add additional lines and have this there or add some text here. Thank you know, you add some additional text here to uh, make a little bit of a commentary on uh, thanking them for their business or some notes or what what not. So that's okay. So how do we get that make make checks payable on the footer? Well, that is something where you have to insert a footer. Let me go ahead and press escape. And that is under the, I believe it's under insert, footer. So we can go all the way down to the bottom. That's the header up there. Or we can just go up here a little bit here. Click to add footer. If you have this option, you can go under here to add it. But since I already got this page, I'm just going to click to add footer. I'm going to go make checks payable to to and your the company name whoever whatever you want to call it now this is the center part of footer this is the left part of footer and this is the right part of footer what you can also do is here select and make page one of two two of three so what we can do is we can have this page number we can add that in there so that is the page number and then maybe what are the number of pages these are this is the total number of pages so we, we can say that page of space and number of pages. So if I close this, if I get out of this, let me go ahead and just get out of this. Go back into this view here. Oops. Go back into the home. Let's go back under the view here. Click that, click out, and click here. And press Control P. You can see it says one of two. Now I have my footer down there. And if I go to the next page, it has the same thing. Oh, and one more thing. Let me go ahead and press Escape out of here. Let's say that you're creating this info. You don't want to see these grid lines. So what you can do is go under View and go under and uncheck this grid lines. And you can see now it's nice and it has this nice white space around it. And you can go ahead and start adding your items. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and leave a comment below. I'd like to hear from you and hope to see the feedback. Also, do you think others might benefit from this video? If so, click the share text below. YouTube will automatically provide a shortened link to this video and give you options to share on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and other social networking sites. Again, thanks for watching.